I'm, I remember being there, right? I couldn't change and it depressed me. I knew that I could have the most amazing life, but I didn't know how to get there. Does that sound familiar to you? Like you, you know, there's something great in you, but you just don't know how to get out of your own way. This is where Christian life coaching, working with a Christian, a certified Christian life coach, where I give you the tools and I show you how to find awareness and to just step into the fullness of what's possible for that desire in your heart. This is why working with a Christian life coach changes everything. But for me, I, I didn't know how to get unstuck, but then I found the answer. And this is why, this is why now I have so many clients, even on my wait list for women who want to work with me because they want to change their lives and they, they are believing believers and they know that God is the way that God is the answer to the question of how is it that I can actually live the life that I know is available to me. And it's all found in the spirit. All of your answers are found in the spirit. You're not going to find freedom without being a spirit filled believer and a, a yielding believer, a spirit led believer. Someone who is spirit led is a believer who is in the word. And this person is the one who lives according to it, not according to the world. Right. I hope I said that right. I didn't say that backwards. Did I right? Like a spirit led believer is a believer who actually yields, who actually yields to the still small voice that you're hearing in your head already. You're already hearing the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your spirit. I mean, do you see that? And so for me, when I think back on like who I used to be, when I showed up as Sherry Capilla, the way I was in my, you know, thirties and forties, when I couldn't change my life, I couldn't stop these wrong cycles. I couldn't stop like the wrong cycles I had that I couldn't stop doing were like staying up late, eating all the foods that I was trying to stop eating because even my weight had depressed me because I had no control over it. I, I, I couldn't change in so many other areas. Like I wanted to become the mother that I knew was available to me, like for me to actually be and show up for my children. I couldn't be the wife that I knew I was able to become because I simply desired for things to just be easier. And I didn't see, I didn't see how to get unstuck. But now that I'm unstuck, and I help women through all of the things that I learned through my Christian certification, I help my clients to get unstuck. And the women, all of the women that I coach privately, either in VIP coaching or through my proximity coaching, I, I help them to apply the same tools that I applied to myself to their lives, right? I coach, I coach women, yeah, absolutely, in, in weight loss, but I also coach them just in life gain. So they can step into and live in the freedom of their, the fullness of their faith. And what I know now and what I help these women to uncover is what to do when you can't change your life, right? Because a lot of times believers are positioned through different habits that prevent them from submitting to God's authority in their life. Get that. And so when you can't submit to God's authority in, in your life, you will find it difficult to renew your mind because you will believe that you are just a strong minded type A woman, right? Or that you are strong willed or that you're simply too old to change. And this is all just a result of having con a conditioned mindset that you've practiced living with. Right. And all of these characteristics, while they really are great characteristics, like being strong willed and determined and focused and, you know, knowing what you want in the life, in, in this life, these are all really great things. So long as these things are actually working for you and they're not working against you, right? Like you get that, right? You may actually find yourself unable to change if you believe that you can't change because you believe what you believe. Because that's really a decision that you've made to actually not change. I want you to get that. You're not changing because part of you 
is okay with not changing. Spiritual, I see spiritual blindness all of the time. Spiritual blindness can keep you from noticing that you are living in pride, that you are limiting yourself. So if you aren't changing in any area of your life, what right things are you doing because they simply feel right to you versus what it is that you know is right and that will give you the life that you want, right? This is this is like the sneaky way that I see this. This is the sneaky way that pride and rebellion and stubbornness, how it all creeps into your life. And these are the ways that you start to live with a sin tolerance in your life, where sin becomes normalized in your life, because you kind of just blend in with the rest of the world. And when this happens, and when it's normalized in this way, it's normalized to the point where you don't see how you need to break those cycles. You won't even notice these cycles. And and here's the truth that you need to know if you want to be convicted to step into like a profound revelation of God's word. God simply cannot be near you in your sin. He's not going to give you the power and the strength that you've been praying for in order to come overcome all of your old ways, right? You've got to identify what is keeping you from God's nearness. If he can't be near sin, what is sin to you? According to James 4, 17. So if you are walking in pride, if you are giving way to rebellion, if you are trusting that you're stubborn and you're wearing these things, things as a badge of honor, you need to have a moment of awakening with yourself. These are sins that God cannot be near. And so if you find yourself feeling like you don't have his grace, his supernatural ability to help you do what you can't do on your own, to actually enable you to change so you can live the life that you know is available for you, then it is imperative that you identify where you are doing things just your way because you don't necessarily hate them. So ask yourself today, Talk to God about this. Where am I able to change, but I'm not because I keep trusting my old patterns, my old ways. And then, you know, I even answered this challenging question. Where will I be? Like what could happen in five years if I don't make a change in my life right now? right? Will changing now enable me to live that life that I know pleases God? And how could living, like, think about this, how could living a life that pleases God give you the life that you ultimately want? Because when you live a life where you live to please God, instead of pleasing yourself, when you live a life to where you are focused perpetually on just pleasing yourself and not pleasing God, you limit God. You have right now within you the ability to change and you have a responsibility in that ability to actually stand up and do the hard things required of you to become changed, to be transformed, to live in the perfect will of God. The problem is that you're only trying. And as a result, you're trusting your flesh. So rise above it. Start walking in the spirit where you are already empowered in this moment to do what it is that you should do. Right? Think about that. You're trying to change the physical and the secret is this, the secret is that your empowerment to do what you need to do to change your life physically is only found when you do it in the spiritual, where your strength actually comes from. <laughs>